Hello. Alex here, and in this video, I want to talk about my trip to Nottingham for Analog Spotlight 2023. Let's get into it. Analog Spotlight are a small group of volunteers who work to connect photographers and small businesses, promote research within the analog industry, and support diverse representation in a field where groups and meetups can often focus around herds of middle-aged white men with beards, and this isn't that. They call themselves a burgeoning global film photography association and, well, they have at least one international member so far. Their launch event was in Worcester in 2022 and I had heard about the 2023 event in Nottingham but I hadn't really made any plans to go until James from Zone Imaging actually encouraged and nudged me to go so I had a look and it was not an expensive trip so I made some last minute bookings and decided screw it, I'll go. Because I was traveling with just a backpack, I decided to keep my kit simple and I brought the Yushikamat 124G and the X-Pan 2 with the 45mm lens. The flight itself was actually fine, nothing special, nothing to note, but when I landed, I tried to load some film into the 124G and do you see what the problem is? Yeah, I'm never cleaning my gear before a trip ever again. To the person who actually sorted me out with the take-up spool, thank you, I owe you, I'll pay you back next year. I got to Nonsuch about 20 minutes early, so just in time to have a coffee before the event started. And the instant I walked through the door, a guy came up to me, introduced himself, hi Jonathan, and told me that he recognized me from my videos. That absolutely made my day. It wasn't the only time that it happened over the weekend, but it's, it's weird, but like a good kind of weird for this to happen. It's not something I'm really used to or super comfortable with yet. After the whole welcome spiel and getting introduced to the group and the founders who were actually hosting the event, I went into the exhibition hall and got talking to some of the exhibitors. I was honestly surprised at how many companies, labs and other people were actually represented at the event because this is just their second year running. You know, they had their launch event last year and they had some big players here, which shows just how much of a pull this group has and how much potential they have for future events. The exhibitors included Zone Imaging, Intrepid Camera, Analog Wonderland, Chroma Camera, Alfie Cameras, New Grain, Ilford Photo and Harman Lab, and quite a few others. I didn't get to talk to everyone and unfortunately there were some things I wanted to buy over there, but I couldn't because I only had a backpack with me. Next year I'll be bringing a suitcase. They also had a bunch of workshops on over the weekend, some of which were repeating, like black and white film development, cyanotyping with photograms, and uh, developing with caffeinol, which is something very interesting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it because my schedule was quite packed for the two days. Both days had a photo walk to get people mingling and networking, and Kodak sponsored them and supplied film, but they were hosted by other people. So the Saturday walk was hosted by the Make It Easy Film Lab. I loaded up some Lomo Color 92 into the X-Pan 2 and I had HP5 in the Yashica mat already. Slapped the X-Pan onto the Mets, got going and it's around that time that I met Joe and KP. I was chatting to KP for a while about his granddad's Leica, beautiful machine and we sort of formed a little mini Leica group and immediately lost the main group. Some things never change on photo walks no matter what group you're with. We caught up though because they had checkpoints along the route and the route went around the city centre and stopped around the castle and various other places with a bunch of planned and unplanned stops for little portrait shoots. After lunch I spent most of the afternoon at some of the various talks that were on and then talking nerdy to Steve of Chroma Camera about his 617 camera because aside from being extraordinarily well made, like physically, it's extremely well designed because he's the only one who seems to have had the genius idea to put a dark slide in the thing so you can swap the back out and use it between his graph lock back and the 617 camera itself. Genius. And I'm really strongly considering getting one if I can find a lens that suits my needs for 617. I won't say too much about the talks themselves, other than that I couldn't really do them justice if I tried to explain them to you and that would defeat the purpose really. They were some really fantastic talks and my favourite was probably Jim Mortram's talk, which made me think a bit more about how I present people in my photography, even when I'm photographing people with consent. The way I showcase them and frame the environment, you know, that has an impact on their perception and how people perceive them in the photographs.
The day wrapped up with a spontaneous portrait session upstairs because there was some beautiful light coming through the windows and people were breaking out. The custom made cameras, packed film, huge flashes, the whole works, it was really fun. And then I finally got to meet Dan who I'd connected with like nearly two years ago on Instagram. So it was good to finally meet him in person even if I didn't immediately recognize him. Sorry. Um, then a bunch of us went out for beers and then pizzas to round out the evening and it was just a really solid end to a very tiring day. Sunday was quieter and definitely a bit more chill, which was good because I was exhausted after Saturday. I did a bit of street photography on the walk to Nunsuch in the morning with the Ashika mat because the light was absolutely stunning. I was up early, couldn't sleep, it was perfect. When I got there, I met up with Owen and we got chatting to some of the exhibitors for a while, especially Dave from Alfie Cameras. He had some prototypes of how he got to the current stage with him and it was surprising to hear about some of the challenges. You know, you, you would think some things are fairly obvious like getting the flange distance of the lens correct or programming the electronics, but things about redesigning the light traps depending on the types of material used for the door, the kind of things you wouldn't think about. It's really interesting to hear about how he actually worked around these things. I got to handle the, the titch or tick for a little bit and it is absolutely tiny. It's hilarious how small a camera it is, but it's not uncomfortable to hold somehow at the same time, despite being so small. And the thing that surprised me the most was that it's actually quite usable with glasses. Now, maybe that shouldn't be surprising because Dave wears glasses himself, so it's probably something that was very consciously considered during the design process, but still, you know, such a tiny viewfinder, you'd think the eye relief would be awful. It wasn't. It's a really cool little camera and, you know, maybe I can try one out someday. Might, if I ever find someone who owns one, I might try and borrow it. The Sunday photo walk was hosted by Lens Fair, run by Alicia and Dan. And though Owen and I may have gone to the Botanic Gardens and missed the start of the photo walk, that kind of worked out in our favour at the end because we knew we, the group was going to the skate park. So we went there first and got some good pictures that wouldn't have been possible after the whole group caught up with us. Once the crowd did get there, I got to meet people like Riley and Heather, Muhammad, and a few other people. It was nice, it was a really good spot. It was quite a small area, but there was a lot going on and there were a lot of corners and shapes and it was just good to do some portraiture around there. By Sunday afternoon, things were winding down quite a bit, so I had a good bit of time to talk to Neil and Michelle from Harman Technologies at the Ilford Photo and Harman Lab booth. I asked them a bunch of questions about possible products, variations of products that could or couldn't exist and, you know, these people have their heads screwed on. I wouldn't expect anything less from them, but they weren't just marketing people. They had really good technical knowledge of the products and, you know, I ask very technical questions about things and they were totally prepared to answer every single one of them. After their raffle that they had on the second day, they actually started giving away the boxes that made up their booth. So I got my limited edition Ilford Ortho 35 centimeter film. The highlight of the afternoon was the talk about AI and its validity as an art form, its current and potential impact on photography. And there were lots of like um, open mic questions talking about things like cryptographic sig signing of uh, raw files for data integrity and this kind of thing. And although there, it was a debate, it didn't get overly heated and I think they both stood their ground very well without things getting too aggressive. And that's exactly how this kind of thing should be. It was really engaging and lots of people in the crowd, including myself, got involved and it was actually just a really fun talk to be a part of. The day and the event wrapped up with some giveaways, including a Mamiya TLR from West Yorkshire Cameras and a copy of the Alfie Titch, or Tick, however you prefer to say it. They also gave away the last of the Kodak film that hadn't been used for the photo walks and I won a roll of Ektar in 35mm. After that, I kind of just had to say my goodbyes and get moving because I didn't have time to stay around for dinner before I had to go and make my flight and make the long trek home. So this was a very spur of the moment trip and I'm glad that I went. So thanks to James for actually pushing me to go. I met a lot of really amazing people who had some great stories and it was good to meet people like Paul, Molly, Kate, Alicia, Dan, Joe, Harry, Jonathan, and everyone else, KP, Owen. I'm not gonna remember everybody's names, but it was really good to meet you all. And I hope that I get to see most or all of you either in Birmingham or wherever Analog Spotlight 2024 happens to take place. I found that the talks were really well chosen and curated because they struck an excellent balance of being accessible to someone who's not involved in whatever circle and whatever topic and field the talk is covering, which is important, 
While still touching on, you know, decently thought-provoking and engaging topics, I find that some events have talks where you kind of have to know the material to be able to understand the material, which is completely antithetical to the point of having a talk at a public event. At least that's my fairly harsh view as someone who's been involved in academia and presentations and presenting and disseminating work but also has no academic background in art and photography. I found everything very accessible. It was absolutely great. The photo walks were really fun and it was actually kind of funny to hear a lot of the same turns of phrase and jokes. Like, okay, I know we're talking about Ireland and the UK, not like Ireland and Singapore, but it was still funny that, you know, we're all the same type of people regardless of where we are in the world and regardless of who we are. It's the still, we're all analog photographers at the end of the day. Lastly, I'd like to thank the exhibitors who spent their time talking to me and answering a lot of very technical questions about a lot of these products and services that some of them have, because I was very open with them that I would not be buying anything because I wasn't able to bring anything home with me. You know, when these people are here to advertise and sell their products and services, someone like me is basically a time sink in that situation, and I really admire and respect that in a sense that they were willing to go out of their way, especially on Saturday when it was a lot busier. I got to see a lot of interesting things that are available now that I wasn't aware of, or things that just aren't available yet, maybe 2024, some cases 2025. Very exciting stuff coming in the pipeline from some of these people. All in all, it was a fantastic event. I am extraordinarily glad that I went, and again, I met wonderful people, had a great time, took lots of wonderful pictures. What more could you want from such an event? That's all I'm going to say for this video, because I could ramble about this trip for hours. So stay safe, and bye-bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.